Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. So today is the last day in the season of Epiphany. And uh, we've, I've been talking a lot about that, about the fact that uh, what Epiphany means is, is uh, a manifestation or a revelation. And so, Patrick, if you want to give me the next slide, and that's the only one you need to worry about during my sermon this morning. So, uh, the, the dictionary, the Merriam-Webster dictionary, um, defines epiphany in this way. These are the definitions for epiphany. And it's, it's interesting to me that uh, the first Sunday of epiphany in Jesus' baptism, uh, we, we see a cloud... Coming, from, coming in the sky, and we hear a voice from the cloud saying, This is my Son, the Beloved. Listen to Him. And today, on the last season of Epiphany, the disciples are with Jesus on the mountain, and they see Jesus transformed to, so that they can see Him in His glory as He will appear in heaven. And what does the cloud, what does the voice from the clouds, again, the cloud comes over and the voice from the cloud, the voice of God says, what? This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Okay? So we get this same message over and over again. Listen to him. He is the one to pay attention to. And so Epiphany, we've got the definitions up there. Um, Epiphany is an, an appearance or manifestation, especially of a divine being. Okay? So, so in, in part, this, this image of Jesus on the mountain with his disciples is, is the, the image of Jesus in his, in his divine form. And of course, with him are Moses and Elijah, Elijah, the greatest prophet of Israel, and Moses, the one who led people out of Israel, out of slavery in Egypt, and, and gave them the law. And so this image of Jesus being transfigured, being transformed on the mountain, meeting with Moses and Elijah, is a symbol that Jesus is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. That in Jesus, we see the culmination of, of all that has been prepared for the people of Israel for, for centuries, centuries. From, from the time that the people left Egypt uh, and Moses gave them the law, they were called to follow that law. And, and by following, them, following that law, then they would achieve righteousness. But the prophets were sent because the people couldn't follow the law. The people didn't follow the law. They listened to, to others and to other voices who, who told them that the law wasn't important or who, who transformed the law or, or changed it to mean something oftentimes opposite of what it meant. And so the prophets, the prophets came and, and they told the people that one who would come, who would be, who would be the Messiah, who would be the Savior, who would be the embodiment and the fulfillment of both the law and the promise that God had given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And now on the mountaintop we see this, this manifestation, this revealing scene or moment, this epiphany, this epiphany moment. Another, another word that is often used in, in epiphany is the word eureka. It's, it's that, that moment of sudden clarity. Sudden clarity when we understand what it's all been about. And today we see Jesus. We see Jesus in His heavenly form 
in, in robes far whiter than, than uh, uh, my dry cleaner could possibly get my robe. Um, far whiter than even the, the beautiful snow that's out on the ground. Jesus is transformed into his heavenly form so that it can be revealed to us who he is. And then the voice says, listen to him. We've been listening to Jesus. We've been hearing uh, him him, uh, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of God has come near. That, That is how the Gospel of Mark starts out. So what does it mean that the kingdom of God has come near? What does it mean for us to be citizens in that kingdom? That is that we follow Jesus. That we listen to him. And that we, we in our lives emulate his. This, uh, this past week, I uh, had a wonderful opportunity to... Uh, um, first time my brother and I have ever done anything like this. We, we took a, a, a trip and we went out to Las Vegas and played golf for, th- for four days. Uh, and it was great. And I was bragging about the weather out there and people were calling me a meanie on Facebook because uh, you know I kept talking about how it was sunny and 75 degrees and we were out in our short sleeves and stuff like that. And, and uh, But there was an incident that happened while I was there. Um, On on Thursday morning, we were playing at the golf course, and we got done. And I came back in, and and we were getting, uh, um, we were checking back in after we had played, and and, uh, I overheard this conversation going on, going around, on in this table, uh, just a little ways away. And uh, this, this gentleman said, well, you know, I've heard many pastors talk about the church and what the church is supposed to be about. And I'm going, huh? Well, this is interesting. And, the, and, they, and I didn't hear much of their conversation, but they were talking about what it meant to be a Christian. They were talking about what the, ch- what the purpose of the church was. These three guys sitting in the clubhouse of a golf course in Las Vegas and they're talking about the purpose of the church and what it means to be a Christian. And I couldn't help myself. I just, you know me, I can't keep my mouth shut. I can't. So I walked over and I, I said, you know, I've been eavesdropping on your conversation and I said, you know, to me, what it means to be a Christian and what the church is all about is loving the people that Jesus loved in the way that Jesus loved them. And they looked at me and they said, Amen, brother. And I left. <laughs> it was like, you know, woo, woo. But that was a revelatory moment for me. That was an epiphany for me. To be in this, in this uh, strange place with, with people I had never met before, And then suddenly, I was inspired by the Spirit of God to go over and enter into this conversation. And it was a blessing to me. It was a blessing to me to share the good news that Jesus has shared with us, that Jesus has shared with me, to share that with others, and to have that affirmed by them. The goal of the church and the point of being a church and of being a Christian is that we do pay attention to Jesus. We do listen to Him. We listen to how He he tells us uh, to live our lives. And then we work at being those kind of people. And Jesus, Jesus has told us over the last, um, over the last five or six weeks uh, through, through the miracles He's performed, through the demons that He has cast out, through the, the healings, that this is God's intention for the world. This is what God 
wants the world to be, and this is the way God wants us to live. Graciously and lovingly, with compassion and mercy for those around us in need. And here were three strangers in the clubhouse of a golf course in Las Vegas, sharing that same vision. And how is it that they could share that same vision for what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be a church? Because they've listened to Jesus too. Because they have paid attention. Thanks be to God for for Christ, for His life, for His message, and for the Kingdom of God that comes to us and is a reality for us here and now, today. Amen.